Well, hello everybody. Welcome to Mr. Paul's Pantry. I'm Mr. Paul. Although, as you can see, I'm not in the pantry at the moment. I'm just sat here enjoying a cup of tea before I make a start on this week's video. Excuse me. Now, the video this week, it's not a recipe as such. It's something you can change around as much as you want. It's really a method of doing something. What it is, it's a cold eating pie similar to a pork pie, which lots of people enjoy around Christmas time. And by the way, I'm sorry there's no Christmas decorations around yet. As you probably know, we make these videos well in advance of Christmas so that you can see them in ta on time. Uh, but I have given you a little t taste of Christmas underneath, I hope. Now, <clears throat> the cold eating pork pie I'm showing you how to do this week is called a turkey pork and cranberry pie uh, and it really is a nice thing to have on a boxing day with a plate of cold cut meats and things like that any leftover chicken turkey or goose whatever you I'm having a duck this year by the way for those people who have already asked me what I'm having for Christmas lunch um, although I've been invited out to the Christmas lunch uh, so I haven't made my mind up yet whether I'm going out for Christmas lunch or I'm going to cook my duck if not, I'll have the duck on Boxing Day. Okay, now come back to the pie. Now, I'm going to put some links underneath the video this week uh, showing you uh, how to make the hot crust pastry. Uh, there's a, a recipe and a video showing you how to do it. Very simple. It's the same pastry I use for my pork pies. Also, I'm going to put a link underneath for making your own sausage meat. Now, you will need some sausage meat for this, for this uh, pie. Now, you can buy sausage meat from the shops. If you can't buy sausage meat, buy your favourite sausage, whatever flavour you like. Just take the skins off. Now, we're going to make with that sausage meat what we call in the trade a force meat stuffing. We're not just going to use the sausage meat as it is. This is where your imagination comes in because making a force meat stuffing with pork sausage meat uh, is uh, up to you. I'm going to dolly mine up with a little chopped uh, um, fresh sage leaves and uh, thyme from the garden. You can add anything you want. You can add a chopped apple, you can add a chopped leek, uh, you can put in um, anything you want in fact. It makes no difference. Uh, I, I've made it before with celery and walnuts and chopped it up and put it in with the um, uh, with, with the sausage meat, mix it all up, make a nice force meat stuffing. So this this recipe this week is for how to do it rather than um, a recipe, okay? So it's up to you. I've shown you how to decide how much filling you will need for whatever size tin you're going to use. Uh, so keep an eye out for that as well. That's a little trick we used to use in the in the bakery, if we were making samples of something, we only wanted to make one or two of something instead of 50 or 60, then we used to work out how much filling and how much pastry we're going to need for that particular pie. I'll show you how to do that in the video. Okay, so I'm going to finish my cup of tea and I'm going to go in the kitchen and get things sorted out and I'll see you later. Bye for now. for this turkey um, pork uh, sort of force meat stuffing pie. It's got turkey, pork and cranberry and uh, the ingredients are very very simple here they are. The first of all the turkey. Now I'm using what we call in Spain a turkey solomillo. It's a little bit like fillet of pork which you get in England. I haven't got any uh, a whole turkey at this stage so I just bought this and I'm using raw turkey. But you can, if you wish, use cooked leftover turkey. It makes no difference. And I've also got here some sausage meat. Now this is sausage meat I've uh, this is sausage meat I've made myself. Uh, and there is a link underneath to my sausage meat recipe. And in that link, you can see various flavours of sausage. You can change it to Cumberland, Lincolnshire, things like that. 
but this is all, just ordinary plain pork sausage meat I've got and I'm going to dolly it up a little with some sage leaves and a little thyme from the garden. You can use dried herbs if you haven't got any. I've also got here some cranberry sauce. Uh, this is pre-made cranberry sauce, so nothing wrong with that and I'm going to use that as well. You will also need some hot crust pastry. This is exactly the same pastry I use for my pork pies and there's also a link underneath that showing you the recipe and how to make it. Okay, I'm not going to go through making the um, I'm not going to go through making the pastry again today. It's very simple. It's water, fat which is lard and you can't change that by the way. Fat is lard and it's got uh, bread flour, salt and water. Nothing else in the pastry. But there we are, that's the pastry and I have to say the pastry must be when you're using it like this. It must be pliable like plasticine, like modelling clay. It needs to be like that. This was made last night and left overnight in the fridge. Then I lifted it out just about 30 minutes ago. So I'll just recap on those. We've got the turkey. We've got the pork sausage meat, which I'm going to make into what we call in the trade a pork force meat stuffing. Okay, I'm going to add some herbs just to dolly it up a little bit. And I've got some cranberry sauce and some pastry. You may also need a little drop of water afterwards, but we'll come to that later. Now, when we come to dollying up the sausage meat, you buy sausage meat from the shop, from the butchers, or you can buy sausages of your favourite variety and take the skins off them. Okay, I've made my own. If you want to make your own, the recipe is underneath uh, a link to making sausage meat. You can dolly sausage meat up into what we call a force meat stuffing to with absolutely anything. You can chop an apple or meat up into it, you can chop leeks up into it, you can add uh, some onion to it, you can add different herbs to it, you can make it what you want. Okay? So buy whatever flavour of sausage meat you like and then if you want to dolly it up or it's just as you want to use it, use it like that. So I'm going to prepare this and slice it and show you how we get on putting it into the pastry casings. Now, this is a turkey solomillo, and I'm just taking it and slicing it on an angle like that, so I've got some nice thin strips. We don't want it cutting too thick, otherwise it will take a lot longer to cook in the pie. But just on an angle like that, nice thin strips. Now, <clears throat> the reason we've got the sausage meat is not only for flavour and texture, but also, as you can see, as you already know, I never have a turkey at Christmas for that particular reason, it's very, very dry, whether it's turkey breast or this part of it, it's a very, very dry meat and difficult to get moist. So we have to put something with some fat inside the pie to make up for the lack of fat in the turkey. And that's why we use the sausage meat, because sausage meat always, whoever makes it, always has a certain percentage of lean and a certain percentage of fat in it. That's how sausage works. That's why it's nice and juicy. That's why it's not like sawdust. Okay? Uh, and uh, so that's what we're going to do. So I've got that prepared now and we'll go on with the rest of the pie. Right, so I'm going to use one of these tins, which is my uh, pork pie tins that I have from the shop. You can use anything at all you wish. You can use these sort of things, spring form tins, you can buy all different sizes of those, small, large. And so when we come to the recipe for the insides of this pie, it's very much up to you what size you want to make it. If you want to know how much filling you want for a pie, what we used to do in the shop, I'll tell you. We used to fill this with rice or something like that and weigh then tip it out and weigh the contents, weigh how much rice that held to the almost to the top. Whether it was that tin or that tin, okay, and then that particular weight, say it weighed, for instance, 400 grams. 200 grams would be for the pastry, 
and 200 grams for the filling. That's how you work out roughly. It's not exact, but it's, uh, it's how we used to do it if we were making an odd number. Normally, of course, uh, we always had uh, set recipes for making 24 pies or 50 pies or whatever, so we didn't have to do that. But initially, if we just wanted to make a sample, we knew exactly how much to make. So we need some pastry, and as I said to you before, it's got to be very pliable. Now this is exactly the same pastry I use for my pork pies. It's got to be like this. It's got to be like plasticine. Almost like modelling clay. So you can actually you can actually model with it if necessary. Like this. See, little elephant's head. It's very, very pliable, okay? So we're going to roll that now. And with this kind of pastry, there's so much fat in this, you don't need to use any flour on the surface. Really, whichever surface you're using, it should not stick to anything that you're going to use, okay? Always roll away from you and towards you, and turn the pastry away from you and towards you. Don't start trying to twizzle the rolling pin around. Now, you don't need to make it too big because that doesn't look like it will go up the sides. I can see that. But what we're going to do is we're going to fold this like this and let it drop into the tin. I'll show you inside, like that. See? So the pastry is sitting on the bottom now. Now, these bits on the side, we just go around and press them to the side of the tin with our fingers first like that. See? Now we're going to go around with our thumbs. This is where it's difficult for me because of the arthritis in my thumbs, but I'm showing you how to do it. And you keep pressing that into the corner and pulling it up towards the rim of the tin at the same time. It's difficult to show you that how I'm actually doing it. Oh, that's probably better. Like that. I'm pulling it up to this surface, uh, to the top edge of the tin. Can you see how it's coming up there? It's still flat on the bottom and there's no spaces round in the bottom corners. We don't want any air in there. So just keep going round until you get a nice thin wall of the pie. We don't want something thick. It's going, we don't want to have it thin in one side and thick in the other. If you've got a piece here which is not really quite reaching the top, Break a bit off this side and stick it over there because we want something overhanging here to stick the lid to. So there we are. Now that's all ready to go. Now that wasn't very difficult, was it? See that? That was not very difficult. There we go. Get the sausage meat, which I have actually chopped up some sage, some sage leaves, and a little thyme. And I've mixed that all together so it's nice and homogenous, still looking like sausage meat. You can use this particular mixture, what I've shown you there, in the recipe for stuffing birds and things like that. But anyway, that's the sausage meat, and now we come to the turkey. Here we are. The thin strips of turkey, as I said to you before, they're going to go start in the bottom. We're going to put some round the side first at the bottom, like that. Then some in the middle. Then perhaps a little more. I'll just cut that in, uh, in half there. Put that on that side, and that piece on that side. Now we've got a nice layer of turkey in the bottom. What we need to do next in there is to season it slightly. We don't want to forget that. Salt, a very small amount, don't put a lot, and some black pepper. I like black pepper, so I'm putting an extra twirl in there. And we're going to put a, a layer of cranberry sauce on top of the 
turkey. Spread it round. A generous, a generous portion. Don't be frightened to put a, some in because this is also going to add to the moisture of the pie as well. So there we are with the cranberry sauce in as well. Now, now we're going to go with the sausage meat. So break small portions of the sausage, move that out of the way, off the sausage meat and squash them flattish and sit them right next to the pastry like that. And go all round the, with a layer of that first. Don't start pushing it down hard because you'll squash all the cranberry sauce up the sides. We don't want to do that. Just keep squashing the piece flat and laying it touching the pastry. Being careful not to disturb the... Now we've got that done, we can put a little bit more in and fill up the gaps to lift it up almost to the top, like that. Just want a little smidgy bit more in here where it's a little depression. There we are. Now if you so want to, you can Put a little more cranberry on there if you wish. I'm going to just put a little on, but I'm not putting a lot. I'm just going to spread it thinly, and you'll see why I've done that afterwards. Just spread it very thinly on top. All I need is a bit of colour there. Now, if I had them, and I haven't I can't get them anywhere this year at all, like everywhere, miles and miles around, I would put a layer of fresh cranberries there, but I, don't, I haven't got that. So then what we're going to do next is we're going to moisten down the sides of the, um, round the sides of the pastry. Just a little water, round there. And then we're going to get a little bit more pastry and make the lid. So, Go. Now for the lid, I'm going to use a lattice cutter, I'll show you. I'm going to put it like that, then I'm going to use a lattice cutter, which I've had for many years. I used to have a stainless steel one, but it seems to have gone by the wayside somewhere. And we'll pick that up now, whoops, pick that up now gently, open the lattice out where it's slit like this, and you'll see now why I've put that little bit of cranberry sauce in there. Now what we're going to do is just gently press that down onto the moist side and then take the back of a knife and just trim it round flush with the tin. There we are. Now there's no need to actually crimp that at all, it's, it's quite nice as it is. There we are. It's a little uneven there, but never mind. I can't do much about that, it didn't quite cut through. <coughs> there it is, that's going to be egg washed on top now, and we'll go in the oven for 45 to 50 minutes at 180 degrees, no fan. If you use a fan oven, you'll have to decide what your fan, what your oven runs at. Mine's at 180, no fan, and that will mean 40 to 50 minutes until it's nice and golden brown. And I'll show you what it's like when we come back. So here we are, the moment of truth with the pie. I'm going to have a look and see what it's like inside now. I don't want to break the thing. There we are. Lift out the piece. And there we are. Inside. Lovely layer of turkey on the bottom. Cranberry there. And the pork uh, sorry, the pork um, force meat stuffing on the top. And it's a lovely looking pie. I think you'll agree. Probably I should have put a little 
gelatine in, but I didn't bother. So I'm going to have a taste now and we'll see what it's like. There we are, I've got a little slice, I'm going to have a little more um, cranberry sauce with that and I'm going to have a little taste right now. Just a little bit more cranberry on there. You can have it with mustard or whatever you want, just a little bit like that. Let's have a taste. Mm. That's very, very nice. The turkey's cooked to perfection, it's not dry at all. It's going to have a little bit of the forced meat stuffing on top. That's a real tasty change from a pork pie. And I'm sure you'll enjoy it as much as I'm enjoying it. So this is Mr. Paul saying <clears throat> bye for now. And if you have enjoyed the video, go down underneath, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't heard, subscribe. The little red bar under there says subscribe. Press that. And then a little bell icon will appear. Click on that. And YouTube will tell you every time I put up a new video. So... Mr. Paul saying bye for now, and I'll see you soon. Bye.